Hello, and welcome to our Fall 23 third edition of Nittany Watch. I'm Chantal Harris. And I'm Mitchell Carson. Nittany Watch is our student-produced digital magazine show, bringing you news, sports, and information from Penn State Harrisburg and the surrounding region. During each program, we present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Penn State Harrisburg and the Susquehanna Valley a great place to call home. On today's show, we'll introduce you to Penn State Harrisburg's eSports and Gaming Club. We'll also give you an inside look at the plans for a new building here on campus. And Caleb Steindell will join us for his sports report. On to our show. Mitchell, do you still use your bank card to pay for food at our school cafeteria? Yes, I do. Well, you're missing out. Really? Mm-hmm. When you use Line Cash, you get 10% off at most eating establishments here at Penn State Harrisburg. Reporter Shu Sun tells us all about it. Did you know that the school cafeteria supports a variety of payment methods? You can not only use your bank card to pay, but also use your student card to pay. But is there a way to get some discounts when you don't have to do a meal plan? In this video, I will show you how to get discounts on your food purchases with Lion Cash. I don't know if you are looking at the cafeteria price list. Have you found that in addition to the meal plan's price reductions, there are also Lion Cash's price reductions? This is the way we are going to use today's preferential. First of all, you can go to the school's official website and use your debit card or credit card to top up your money into the Lion Cash inside so that when you pay for the meal you can use your student card to make a quick payment. At the same time, your food will also enjoy a 10% discount when you pay with Lion Cash, and you can even buy Starbucks coffee at Biscotti's and get the same discount as the school's campus meal plan which means that if you only like biscottis, you can pay for your food with Lion Cash instead of purchasing a campus meal plan because they both offer the same discount. It's worth noting that Lion Cash's 10% discount doesn't work if you buy an item in a cafeteria that requires you to scan a barcode to pay for it, and you'll only get 10% off school food purchases. And I recommend downloading this app on your phone. It puts your student card in your phone wallet so you don't have to worry about not having it with you, and it pays for cafeteria meals and gets discounts just like a physical student card. And it will also show you the real-time balance of your card, so you don't have to worry about not charging in time, resulting in the inability to pay. Wow, I never thought you could get the same deal as a meal plan using Lion Cash here at our cafeterias. Mm -hmm. You can. Bon appetit. Speaking of food, what about drinks? Chantel, do you enjoy sipping beverages? Of course I do. Do you enjoy painting? Oh, I love to paint. Painting is so relaxing. Well, I heard there was an event on campus hosted by Mayap where you can do both at the same time. Today, we immerse ourselves in a canvas of culture and creativity as the Multicultural Academic Excellence Program or Mayup at Penn State Harrisburg recently hosted a unique instructed sip and paint event. This wasn't your typical art affair and it was an opportunity for students to be guided by the brushstrokes of an expert. Noticed our students over the years around this time, in particular midterms, exams, things like that, really take a, a toll on our students and their mental health and simply recognizing where they are in their academic journey. It's a very important time, a lot of crunch time. And so it's essential to provide spaces and atmosphere that allow for just I don't want to say a mindless activity, but a activity that's not necessarily as stimulating. Like they were able to unwind from their day of, you know, being in class or just from the days and the journeys of life. They're just able to take this moment and be able to just re relax and just, you know, and enjoy and be creative and have fun with their other students. So I want students to be able to take away um, hopefully a little bit of a de-stressed moment. I want them to leave the room not as stressed as when they walked into the room. Um, additionally, I want them to be able to walk away with the knowledge or confidence is maybe the word that, hey, I did this and I can do it again if I wanted to. Seeing how encouraged they were and how satisfied and how happy they were of seeing their finished product that they turned uh, basically nothing into something and that they were able to take home something that they had created themselves that, and that they enjoyed doing at the same time. This event was a true fusion of artistry and culture that showcased the incredible talent and diversity within our campus. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm Sajin Holder and I hope the colors and stories from tonight's coverage continue to inspire you. Wow, that looked like a lot of fun. I'll have to attend it next year. 
Chantel, have you ever heard of an event where you can eat, play games, join raffles, and play in a bouncy house in the shape of a turkey, all while on your college campus? Not sure that I have. Reporter Sejean Holder brings us all the fun with this story. Want to find a way to relieve stress? Well, you should attend the Fall Fest. Currently, we're doing the Fall Fest this year, 2023, so we're just handing out some air fresheners for the free for the students here. I think it's a nice way to have something fun for the students to do, come relax, get free items, you know. This, there's a bouncy castle right there, like stress relieving, especially like midterm season, where students are like, they're most stressed. I think it's just important. It's a chance for me to get involved in the community and meet a whole bunch of new faces. Um, I'm a very personable person, so I just like to be out in the world, out in the community, and just providing as much happiness and smiles as I can. I love seeing students out here spinning the wheel, laughing, eating food, having a good time, hanging out with their friends. I'm Sajin Holder, and this is Nittany Watch. Ah, the Fall Fest is amazing every year. Impact does a wonderful job of coordinating the events for the students. I'm sorry I missed out on those mini pies. Well, while Mitchell dreams about mini pies, we'll be right back with more campus news right after this. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Welcome back. Chantel, did you know there was going to be a new building built here on campus in the next few years? No, I actually didn't know that. Well, reporter Matthew Wincoop dives into what the project will include. Penn State Harrisburg is planning to add a new building to campus within the next couple years. The groundbreaking is expected to begin in fall 2024 and be completed by 2026. The need for more classroom space made this new building project necessary. It is expected to be about the size of the SEC and will be located in the big open field parallel to Wharton Avenue. Todd Camp, Executive Director of Administration at Penn State Harrisburg and the leader of the building process provided information about the new building. Um, we basically have been you know, looking at our enrollment growth and our needs for classes and sizes of classes. Um, and we pretty quickly determined that with our existing buildings and classrooms that we were tapped out in terms of capacity and needed to add additional rooms to support our growth. Basically because we have the potential to grow. Um, we have you know, continued to increase enrollment, um, but we have capped out the enrollment because of the lack of space on campus. Mm -hmm. So it became pretty obvious in order to continue to grow, um, as a campus, we needed to add another building. Camp also provided some information about additional projects planned for campus and also described what the use of the trailers next to Olmstead are for. We are adding on to that building and renovating the entire exterior um, to make it much more aesthetically pleasing because that's really the front door of our campus for many of our prospective students. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a small addition. It's an, an actually an outdoor covered area for to start tours and things, um, and that'll be happening starting in March of next year. Uh, in conjunction with that, we have a student-funded project to redo the. There's a parking lot in between the Cub and Swadera mm -hmm. to take the parking lot away, and we're going to work with students to design more of a plaza gathering space. Four trailers, there are you know, four 45 seat classrooms roughly. They were added about 10 years ago, um, back when this was before SEC, before EAB, um, when there was a, at that point a need for additional classrooms. And the intention was for it to be temporary, um, maybe a year. Mm -hmm. And this is you know, going on 10 years now that we've had them. Um, they're not um, ideal in terms of classroom space. And one of the requirements that we have internally with the new building is that they have to go. So when the new building comes online, the trailers will be going away. With construction set to begin in 2024, 
Students should stay tuned for any updates on the project and any potential road closures. For Penn State Harrisburg Student Media, I'm Matthew Winkoop. Sounds like it'll be a really nice addition to our campus. For sure, and Penn State Harrisburg students should be aware of construction starting in fall of 2024. Mitch, did you know that the eSports and Gaming Club hosted a Super Mario Sports Games Tournament this past weekend? Really? Mm-hmm. That sounds like fun. I would love to learn more. Well, you're in luck. Reporter Ben Roberts has all the information you need. On December 1st, the students of the eSports Club here at Penn State Harrisburg hosted a tournament for Super Mario Sports Games in the Educational Activities Building, Rooms 102 and 103. The games students could compete in included Mario Golf Super Rush and Mario Super Sluggers. The event was hosted by the president of the club, Silas Connell. Hi, my name is Silas Connell. Um, I'm the president oh, no, of the like, Gaming and Esports oh, Club that, on campus. So we do, we've been doing tournaments um, for a while now. The club has been around for a while, but we don't only do tournaments. We also have weekly um, game nights on Friday nights. And we also have an esports team that's competing. In addition to the tournament, attendees were also treated to pizza and drinks, free of charge. But the main appeal of the event, however, was the cash prize of $20. Uh, my name is Jacob Stamper, and I love video games. It's a big part of my life. I've played Nintendo ever since I was really a kid with my uh, Nintendo DS and the Wii. This was one of the games I had, and I loved it. Um, but this is mainly a part of the eSports club here at Penn State Harrisburg, which is, um, as a first semester student here, I'm new to this campus, and this was one of the first clubs that um, I was told about, which is good because I love eSports. Uh, when I was up in Maine campus, I was a big part of a eSports club up there. Um, so I'm looking to get sort of work into here and make my mark here and help grow it in this uh, campus here. Students also gave their insight in their favorite Mario games as well. My favorite Wii game, hmm, uh, I think it would probably be, uh, I really like Wii Party. I think that one's a pretty good one. An easy one to say is Mario Kart, because if you know me, I'm like the Mario Kart guy. Um, Mario Kart Wii is just so unforgiving, and it's just, as a kid, it was just hilarious. But, I don't know, this game was, I played this a lot as a kid, I played Mario Sports Mix a lot as a kid, I was just a huge Mario uh, player. Um, and then I, I honestly, Super Mario Galaxy, amazing game. Be sure to check your student email, as well as the Cork app, for more information on future events hosted by the eSports Club, as well as information for other events as well. There's always fun to be had here at Penn State Harrisburg. Wow, that does sound like fun. I'll definitely have to attend it next semester. Speaking of fun, Mitch, we all know music is the medicine of the mind, and Penn State Harrisburg knew exactly how to add to the cure. The concert band, jazz band, and concert choir performed a free concert called The Many Colors of Music during their fall concert for all students and guests. Let's take a look. The theme of this performance was called The Many Colors of Music. This concert was open to the public both nights on November 15th and 16th from 7 to 9 p.m. with over two hours of performances by the Penn State Harrisburg Campus Choir, Jazz Ensemble, and Concert Band. I'm Ben and I play trombone in the Concert Band and Jazz Ensemble here at Penn State Harrisburg, also part of the Campus Choir. It's every week we have rehearsal from, um, it's scheduled from 6 to 9, we don't usually go past 7.30 or 8. The theme is the many colors of music, so we're performing um, a lot of pieces that have colors in the title. Um, you might recognize Brown Eyed Girl or Rhapsody in Blue. Yes. Hi, my name is Cece Chen. Hi, I'm Tessin Cohen. We're in Cold Concert Choir. We're playing songs called Seeking Light and White Christmas. My favorite part is just everybody gets a chance to get together and sing a song together. I also enjoy like how like a lot of people who love music to get together and sing music together and enjoy. Uh, my name is Vaughn Hennessy. I've been in the band for about two years now. I play trumpet. Um, as well as jazz ensemble. 
My favorite part is just, because it is such a small group, you really get to know everybody here, um, and there's just a lot of flexibility. Uh, I'm Ken Dubroff. I'm Patrick Hogan. Jazz band is definitely the most difficult of the bands, so you take, there's a lot more effort that you have to put into it. We're doing Blue Rondo a, a la Turk. Uh, there's Black Market, uh, Raising the Grass. It's a 1962 reissue custom shop Stratocaster. This is a smaller company, LSL. Uh, same style, it's a Strat style. Started a club, uh, the Jam Club. Soon, the first meeting will be taking place on December 1st at 6 o'clock at EAB 204, so that's the black box. Uh, if you have any musical experience or you play anything, uh, please come. If you play brass, if you play guitar, if you play bass, if you play something else, please come. Anyone interested in joining concert choir, jazz band, or even concert band, it is offered as a class and covers the requirements for a gen ed arts or classes pertaining to a minor in music. From Penn State Harrisburg's Nittany Watch, I'm Jessica Barb. Make sure to listen for the upcoming dates of the spring concert on campus. You won't want to miss the sounds of the season. Speaking of the season, reporter Dylan Hassinger had an opportunity to interview some students on campus about upcoming finals, whether or not they feel prepared, and finally, what they plan on doing over winter break. Arwan, what is your major and what year are you here at Penn State Harrisburg? So my major is kinesiology major, and I'm a third year student in this campus. Awesome, awesome. So, we, it's been a long fall semester, everything's coming to a close, we're having finals coming up, it's officially December. How many finals do you have to take, and how do you feel preparing for those finals? Do you feel prepared? Do you feel ready? So I actually have to take three finals and a final project, which is a little too crazy. But I feel like using Learning Center, and I have made friends as tutors. So my tutors, because I have been going so often there, they have become my friends. So we just kind of like started together a lot. Awesome. And more, more. I, have, I have four finals, and I think I'm pretty good for all of them. What are some of the classes there for? Um, I have a cyber one, a IST, the information security technology, and a, a math one. What would you say is your best subject? Best is probably my cyber classes. Gotcha. Um, I have four finals. Um, I have been like studying for them already. I feel pretty prepared, but I'm going to need a lot more studying. What are some of the classes you're taking that you're doing it for? I'm taking chemistry. Um, I also have a CAS presentation and a math exam coming up too. Awesome. I believe I have five finals. Only five. two of them are in person, thankfully. The rest okay. will be online. Uh, I'm not feeling super prepared, but no stress. I'm taking 400 level, three 400 level finals in development, personality, and abnormal psych. Okay. I'm also taking a comparative literature course about the Holocaust and a women's studies course. Mm -hmm. So we have winter break coming up. Are you heading back home? And if you are heading back home for the winter break, what are some fun things you're going to be doing? What are you looking forward to? Yeah, I will be heading home. Um, I'm excited. I've, I play soccer here as well, but um, I'll be playing a lot of soccer yeah. at home. Yeah, so uh, that'll be exciting. I'm just glad to see my friends, you know, chill out, play some Xbox. And then uh, for New Year's, I'm going up to Toronto, Canada to see some family. So awesome. I'm, uh, I'm going to Dubai, you know, UAE for my, my sister lives there. Dubai? So, yeah. Nice, nice. What are you going to be doing there? Chill at the house and go outside and see the body. And yeah, from. nice. So I actually uh, moved up here to Middletown. I personally have a uh, off-campus house myself, so I will be kind of living in the area, but I will be going back to D.C. for four days uh, during Christmas time just to see my folks. Um, and the time when I'm off, um, I'm just going to be picking up hours at work to you know make some money uh, during the break. Um, and when not, then, you know, have some time to finally breathe. Have some break. Um, so yes, I do plan on going home uh, to New Jersey. I'm excited to like see my family. I have two brothers. I'm excited to spend some time with them and like catch up with friends. Um, binge a lot of Christmas movies. Like what are some movies you want or you're not going to watch? I always watch Home Alone. Okay. Every single year. That's a classic favorite. Yeah. And also my birthday's coming up, so I'm excited to celebrate that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I will be heading back home. I'll actually be in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, where I currently reside. Um, and what I'm doing over, I'll be all over the place. Actually, I'll be with my girlfriend uh, for the entire break. We'll spend some time with my family's, and then some time with hers, and then towards okay. the end of the break, we'll split back up. I will be heading home, and during winter break, um, honestly, I look forward to spending time with my family, especially during the holidays. It's something I really do look forward to every year. So getting to see them again after the long semester ending, I feel like, even though we just came back from Thanksgiving break, right. It was a little cut short, but I get to yeah. spend a little bit more time this break. 
I just, I'm just looking forward to the break in general. Hopefully everyone gets some much needed rest and relaxation over break. Coming back to campus after the new year, fully charged. Happy holidays. We'll be right back with Caleb's sports report after this message. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Greetings, everyone. My name is Caleb Steindel, and this is your Nittany Watch Sports Report. We begin things today with men's basketball. And let me tell you something, it is an incredible time to be a fan of the sport here at PSH. The team has been on fire to start the year, racing out to an 8-1 record that includes a pair of conference wins against Gallaudet and King College. The squad is on fire in the United East Bolt Division, and their success has been largely fueled by the fearsome trio of Nate Curry, Donnie Baylor-Carroll, and Alex Lennon. Senior guard Nate Curry leads the team with an impressive 50% from three and nine rebounds per game. Senior guard Baylor Carroll leads the team with 17.1 points per game, 3.7 steals per game, and 5.2 assists per game. Senior Alex Lido leads the team with a 63.2 field goal percentage and 1.9 blocks per game. Curry and Baylor Carroll have also recently earned United East Player of the Week honors. It is certainly a team effort, however, as the Lions are averaging 75.6 per game. And in their recent win over conference rival Gallaudet, they set a program record of 31 assists in the game. The Lions have four more games before winter break, but none of them are conference matchups. They'll look to finish 2023 on a high note before heading into January, which has seven conference rivals on the schedule. We'll be right back after the short break. of people are connecting. Father. Cosplayer. Mentor. Actor. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. Welcome back everyone to a very special segment of Coach's Corner here at Nittany Watch. Now I am excited to be joined today by the head coach of the men's basketball team, Coach Don Friday. Coach, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Caleb, it's great to be here. Thank you. Uh, now, first question that I have for you is just a general question. Thoughts on the season so far? You guys have been off to a really strong start. You're eight and one. What's your assessment of the season and how do you think it's gone? Caleb, I think one of the, one of the points of emphasis coming into this year, right, talking to our guys was we were trying to take it one game at a time. Like, you know, last year, you know, we had some major graduation and we were talking about three peats. We were talking about NCAA tournament and trying to get to the second weekend. And, you know, a couple of the seniors came to me, Nate Curry and Donye, who returned this year and said, hey, listen, let's not put pressure on the guys. We've been there, but let's go about this one day at a time. You know, tr try to get 1% better each day. Now, with that being said, and Donye coming back and having Nate and Al and some veteran experienced guys like Malik Holland here with us, we were aggressive in our non-league schedule. So we put Kane University, we put Marymount, we put St. John Fisher, uh, you know, CCNY going back to New York last night. We intentionally did that. We went to Susquehanna's tournament because we know when we get into our league, our strength of schedule is going to take a hit. So our non-league, you know, coming out of this 8-1 and one right now, I'm happy. Uh, where we're at today, but we have a really big one to turn around at Newman on Thursday night. Their record's down, but they've gone through some injuries. But I like where our guys are going. I would give us a C- minus to a low B right now where we are program-wise. So what that means really is this. I think we have another level we can get to. We have to be creative on the way people defend us, so we're going to have to simulate that in practice because guys are going to try to take Donye and Nate out of that. We're not there yet. John Carroll, who's number one in the country, they kicked our backsides in, in that tournament. And the reason being is they took key people away from us. We weren't, we weren't quite ready for that level of intensity, but now we are. And then come February, we're not going to get obliterated where we're walking down the street going up against a team like that. 
and they are going to hammer us. So we got a taste of it. We're going to learn from that failure. And, you know, at eight and one is great right now, but nine and one is going to sound a lot better on, on Friday morning. Yeah, absolutely. And you talked about some of the specific players on your team. Obviously, it's a big team effort, but you do have a pretty dominant trio of Nate, Donye, and Alex. Talk to me a little bit about their play specifically, what that does for the rest of the team when they are on fire. They've scored 57% of the team's total points per game. So talk to me a little bit about their play and what does it do for the rest of the team? Well, I think it's like anything else, right? It's like the infrastructure behind it. You know, you can't forget about guys, though, like Chase Robinson. You can't forget about Isaiah Eggleston, Isaiah Million, and those guys because they're laying the foundation for those guys to do well. But I, I will say this, coaching, and I've done it for 30 years. Like, and I've coached Mike, I coached Mike Rhodes, who's the head coach at Penn State, Maine. Like, we won a national championship with Mike. He was different. You know, I coached John Robert Holden, who's now the assistant GM for the Brooklyn Nets, right? He was different at Bucknell. Jay, you know, for, is referring to JR and to Mike that way, Donye and Nate are that to me now as a head coach here. Uh, they are generational and they are unique. And what makes those guys go is they allow guys to play with them, but when they need to put their foot on the gas, they do that, but they're great teammates. And Alex, you know, you mentioned him, his, his level of improvement from last year to this year, that guy spent eight weeks in Vegas working every day, right? Working at, at a training academy with some NBA guys and some high-level college guys. And what he came back was he came back in shape, he came back better skilled, but most importantly, he came back with great confidence. So now you have those guys doing that, and then, hey, Eggleston could come in and do his thing. Lance Douglas is the unsung hero, but, you know, you go to the airport, you see the airplane taking off, right? And everybody thinks it's that. But it's the people at the front at the gate counter. It's the people directing the planes on the runway. It's the people in the tower. It's the pilots. It's everything. So what we see on the front looks great, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of things in between that makes that go, but... It's a lot of fun coaching those two guys, and with Alex's maturity, it's been great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, teamwork's a massive part of it. That's a good segue to it. My next question, which is about assists. Maybe more, even more impressive than the points per game is the assists you guys are putting up. Is they're averaging 18 assists per game. You just had 31 assists against Gallaudet on the second. Set the program record for assists in a game. What does that accomplishment mean to you? Well, I think it shows that we're willing to share the basketball, and we're, we're willing to let other guys do things to, to win for, for our program. Uh, you know, coming into the Gallia Deck game, I didn't like the way we were moving the ball, and I thought the ball was sticking, and it was really like everybody was taking an obligatory, like, hey, dribble, 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 right? I, it was like James Harden 2.0 at Penn State <laughs> Harrisburg. But what we, we were able to do, we talked about, hey, you got 0.5 seconds. 0.5 to shoot it, pass it, drive it, keep it moving, right? And our guys bought into that against Gallia Deck. It made it better for Nate, because Nate's more of a guy organically, when the ball's flowing, he makes great rapid decisions. Donya is really good when it's flowing organically. And quite frankly, he's not going to get a lot of easy looks, right? He's at the head of every scattering report. Yeah. He's getting an A defender every time. So with the ball moving, it just allows other people to get involved. And when you're touching it, now you're defending harder at the other end. So I think it's a really fun way to play. And it's going to have to be, for us to go where we want to be, we're going to have to be a team of great ball movement. And we're going to have to really defend people at a high level. Yeah, now you mentioned uh, conference opponents a little bit earlier. You haven't faced too many uh, so far, but you do start a big stretch run in January of 10 straight games against conference opponents. Is there a particular conference rival that you find even more challenging to prepare for than the rest? Now, here we are. We're getting ready to play Newman, and you're asking me about <laughs> conference people. But, you know, right now it's Newman, 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 sure, yeah. Newman. But I think at our conference, right, you know, Lancaster Bible and Coach Mack and his staff, they're so well-versed down there, and they have an identity. Uh, St. Mary's is really good. Penn College has some really good players and they've emerged as a good team. So, hey, I think, you know, when you get in the league, people know each other so well and you know your tendencies and what you're going to take away. I, I think we're, I think we got a challenging league ahead of us. And then with this, you know, United East merging with the CSAC, you know, the other side, there's some really good teams there, but we're not going to, we're not going to sit there and give anybody any locker room or bullet board, bulletin board material. To get people fired up, hey, it's one job at a time, 1% better every day. Whoever we're throwing at the next schedule, we're going to go out there, we're going to prepare, and those 40 minutes, we're going to make those 40 minutes count. Yeah, that's good. I like that. And looking ahead to the rest of the season, starting with Newman and moving forward, um, what is uh, the number one area of focus that you uh, think is, is tops in your mind in order to have success and make a playoff run down the stretch? We're going to have to rebound at a high level, uh, number one, and being able to go out and get stops. So between our man-to-man -man and our zone defense, right, 
we have to we have to make sure that we're committing time in that these next several weeks and months to get better and, and I think we have another level we can get to there, right? That's gonna come into conditioning. It's gonna be some of the younger guys in our rotation coming to light and being ready to shine when they're called upon. Uh, we're not gonna be able to do this going through this, this schedule with just playing eight guys. We're gonna need more strength in numbers with guys and that means being on the same page, being dialed in and being able to execute, right? Who plays at a high level with intensity? Who has a motor but who can execute, right? That's what we're looking for. And who's gonna do that where you're not disruptive and you're coming in and you're throwing it off for you know guys like Curry and Liba and Baylor Carroll who have some who have some continuity and some chemistry. So that's going to be really important. But we need more guys that way. And you know as we talk about that, that's Kyle Roden, that's Dylan Moore, that's going to be Malachi Thomas and some of these other guys. It, Isaiah Million are going to have to really embrace their role even more for us to go to where we need to be. And you know with this non-league schedule, I mean we got a tough stretch coming up. It's Newman, it's Bridgewater on Saturday. Then we go to uh, Alvernia, and then we go down to Randolph-Macon's tournament. But we did this, we did this schedule so that we're battle-tested come, we hope, NCAA tournament time. Yeah. Now, you've mentioned a lot of individual players on the team, which I really appreciate. And I want to ask a question about culture. I think that term gets thrown around a lot. And I'm curious what that means to you specifically as a college coach. How do you instill a winning culture, and how do you balance success on the court with academic success? Well, I, I think for us, we talk about diplomas and championships in that order. And now it's diplomas, championships, careers, right? Because we want our guys to get a great education. We want to win at a high level. But we want people that, you know, we want employers and people in the professional industry to seek out our student athletes to be able to join their teams and do great things for, you know, uh, in industry. They become great fathers, husbands, leaders within the community. And I think that all starts through a sports team, right? Because you have to give in order to get. And you have to sacrifice that way. But I think in terms of our culture, like we want to be a welcoming program. We want every student that's involved in our program, just within the Penn State community, right, to feel safe, feel welcome, feel embraced and part of that. We want to be humble and driven. We want to work hard, get 1% better every day. But if what we were doing, and I, I heard a guy speak one day, Ken Langone, when I was at Bucknell. Ken Langone is one of the co-founders of the Home Depot. And he said, here's how I run my life. If I was sitting at the breakfast table with my mother and father and they were reading a newspaper at breakfast with me in their presence and my actions were to be 100% accurately reported in that newspaper article, as my parents read that article and they gazed down at me, would they be proud of me or would they be infuriated? And I think if we say that to our guys, like, hey, how do you want to live your life? How do you want to conduct yourself? Because what they're working on right now is their brand and their brand becomes part of our program as well. But we want them to be the best brand version of themselves, right? And that's growing. Like, I'm a better coach today than I was two years ago, than I was 10 years ago, than I was 20 years ago. You know, Muhammad Ali says, a man who sees the world at 50 the same way he saw it at 20 wastes 30 years of his life, right? We're always learning and growing. And this is a great opportunity for these young men to learn and grow about themselves. And then when they leave here, hey, they're on a fast track to success. So, you know, culture is a tricky word. I mean, we're, we're fortunate right now because we're winning. We happen to have really good people who are really good students, who happen to be really good basketball players. If you start bringing in guys that are really good players, but they're knuckleheads and they're not gonna do the right thing off the court, you're gonna poison the well really quick. You're not gonna win. And this is a long game, not a short game. So short term, we're winning here now, but hey, guys like Baylor Carroll, guys like Nate Curry, guys like Brandon Coleman, you know, my son, you throw in Dylan Daniels, they're winning now after they're done playing. Their, their, their sneakers are hung up but they're successful people. That's what we want to stand for. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it's all about after all. And so my final question for you now is we've got an eight and one record to start the season. A lot of, lot of uh, really exciting moments so far. Is there any particular moment as you look back on the season so far that's a highlight for you that sticks out? Best moment of the season? Oh gosh, I think there's so many of them. And sure. this is a, this is a, a, a journey, but yeah. you know, I, I think the first practice is always a fun thing. It's like Christmas morning, right? Your, your guys get there and you know, seeing our guys have some success and, and seeing the, the interactions with our guys, right? Uh, you know, some of these new freshmen coming in, like Justin Leto and the way he kind of blends in with our guys, uh, seeing the way our guys rally around each other. Uh, you know, Russell, Russell uh, Ruang from China, right, who's an international student here, the way he, you know, connects with our guys. There, there's so many of those great moments and highlights, but, 
You know what I think, Caleb? I think our best moment is still out there yet to come. So I'll let you know when that gets here. Absolutely. Fantastic. That's the perfect answer, too. Coach, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah. Really appreciate it. We cheered you guys on. Best of luck to the men's basketball team throughout the rest of the season. It's an honor to be here. Thank it's a great, you. great setup. And uh, we're very, very grateful for everything Penn State does and our communications department. So look forward to being back. Hopefully I get invited again. Appreciate it. Love to have you back. Thank you. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about women's basketball and we'll move on with the rest of the sports report. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through. I'll find you in the morning sun and when the night is new, I'll be looking at the moon and I'll be seeing you. Welcome back to the Nittany Watch Sports Report. In women's basketball, the season did not begin the way that they had hoped. Four straight losses, including three by double digits, had them struggling. However, they have since won four of their last six games, including a pair of conference victories over Penn College and Gallaudet. Reporter Sejean Holder had the chance to catch one of the women's games last week, and she takes us courtside for an intense matchup against Arcadia University. It was a clash of teams that had fans on the edge of their seats, and she has the story. Hello, and welcome to Nittany Watch. I'm Sajin Holder, and our story tonight takes us to the hardwood courts where the Penn State Harrisburg women's basketball team faced a challenging matchup against Arcadia University. It was a nail-biter from start to finish as both teams led everything on the court in a battle of skill, strategy, and determination. The Penn State Harrisburg Lions are known for their tenacity and strength and bravery during competition. Um, I feel like if we stuck to what we did, like our plan, and worked together, we weren't in our head. Um, we took shots that just weren't, like quick shots that just weren't good. Um, trusting our coach and trusting our, ourselves as an individual. I feel like we played their game and not our game. The game brought moments of excitement, showcasing incredible athleticism and teamwork. However, despite the Lions' best efforts, the victory eluded them process matters and the more we focus on process the more the outcome will go in our direction. I thought we played a fantastic first half and stuck to the, the plan and the process that we were looking at and in the second half that kind of got away from us and then we got a little too individualized. Mm -hmm. um, so we're a stronger team when we play for each other and with each other and so that's the, the lesson from today is continuing to learn and depend on each other. Um, our next two practices coming up um, we're going to grind, work hard, make each other better and just analyze and see what we went wrong and work on that and fix on those little mistakes and come back for our next game better. Uh, this season our goal is to win a championship and so uh, we return some great players with some great skill sets and the ability of them to work together and trust each other and trust in the process and grow towards um, the inevitable championship that we're seeking. So that's the, that's the primary focus of the coaching staff, the primary focus of the team. Despite the loss, the team remains focused and determined to bounce back stronger in the upcoming games. Sports, after all, is about facing adversity, learning from experiences, and coming back even stronger. We'll continue to follow the Penn State Harrisburg women's basketball team's journey throughout the season. Thank you for joining us tonight on Nittany Watch. We now transition to track and field, which has just kicked off the indoor season for both the men and women. The Yori Spence Garcia Invitational was hosted on December 2nd by St. John's University at the Ocean Breeze Athletic Complex, and there were some strong performances across the board for PSH. On the women's side, senior Leah Gray finished 11th out of 62 in the 60-meter dash with a time of 8.01 seconds. Senior Steph Ryder moved into second place in program history in both the weight throw and the shot put. Senior Katrine Cavanaugh and junior Sarah Gibbons also moved into second place in the pole vault and the 1,000 meter, respectively. On the men's side, Coleman Greg Akaliste set a PR and finished third out of 16 in the weight throw. It also earned him a second place finish in the program record book. Paul Netland also finished seventh at the competition in the 60 meter hurdles. We now take a break from intercollegiate sports. Intramurals have been wrapping up the fall season with flag football, bowling, and dodgeball. Reporter Mitchell Carson has the story. 
The intramural flag football season started with a total of 15 teams. After six teams were eliminated, it was time for the playoffs. In the quarterfinals, teams Motion, Amusement Park, CBFW, and Team 9 were victorious. In the semifinals, Motion and CBFW secured wins defeating Amusement Park and Team 9 with scores 27 to 14 and 39 to 15. It then came down to the championship match, Motion versus CBFW. Motion won the match with a score of 26 to 22 and were the champions of the intramural flag football season. It was really good to be back here for the third time. Um, me and my team went through a little struggles. We had teams up on us and uh, found our ways out of those positions, came back on top and took that W. After flag football, Bowling rolled into their playoff round. Intramural bowling started with 12 teams. When playoffs began, four teams remained in the game. Spaceballs versus Bull Job and Shanghai Sharks versus Three Holes, Four Guys. Bull Job and Three Holes, Four Guys bowled a total of 572 and 508 points defeating Shanghai Sharks and Spaceballs, who had totals of 462 and 464 points. In the final match, Bull Job bowled a total of 634 points, defeating Three Holes Four Guys, that bowled a total of 547 points, making Bull Job the champions of intramural bowling. Hey, it, was a, it was a lot of fun winning it. Like, uh, we got, I got my personal best today, and we put in a, a lot of effort uh, coming here like an hour before to hit and uh, throw some balls down the lane. It was fun. Intramural bowling advisor Daryl Bauer was satisfied with the season. Very exciting season. A lot of the ones that just uh, started off bowling, uh, you know, it gives them a lifetime sport that they can continue on throughout their, 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 their years. It was a very good season. After bowling, it was time for dodgeball. On its one night only match, there were a total of 13 teams. When it went into playoffs, five teams were eliminated while the remaining eight teams battled it out for the championship. After another six teams were eliminated, it was on to the championship round against the final two teams, Balls Deep versus the Blue Balls. Balls Deep came out on top and were the champions of the intramural dodgeball season. So it was a heartfelt match. We went down 2-1 uh, in the semis. We came back, and it was a breeze on the final game. So it feels great to come all together. Get that win. Mitchell Carson, Penn State Harrisburg, Student Media. Thanks, Mitchell, and congratulations to Flag Football's Motion, Bowling's Bowl Job, and Dodgeball's Balls Deep on their wins. Intramural's winter season will start January 10th with table tennis. Registration for table tennis and other winter sports for intramurals are available. To register, students can go to their website at imleagues.com slash Penn State Harrisburg. To keep up with Penn State Harrisburg sports all year round, visit the school athletic page at athletics.hbg.psu.edu and follow Penn State Harrisburg Athletics on social media. Keep up to date with sports on the Blue and White Journal website at pshblueandwhitejournal.com and the Nittany Watch YouTube page. And don't forget to check out the past episodes of the Nittany Watch Sports Show. I'm Caleb Steindale, and this has been the Nittany Watch Sports Report. Thank you, Caleb. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on the Penn State Harrisburg Student Media YouTube channel. Or check out our link on the Penn State Harrisburg Student Media website, pshblueandwhitejournal.com. For all of us here at Nittany Watch and WPSH-TV, thank you for watching and, and happy, happy holidays. holidays.